Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. In this series, for those of you who are new to the channel, I play rapid games on chess.com in the 15 minute plus 10 second time format and try and explain my thought process while I play so that you can understand what I'm thinking and hopefully implement some of the ideas to help you improve in your own game and then use the post game analysis to delve a bit deeper into some of the ideas of the game so that I can learn and therefore be able to teach you a bit better and see where I went right, see where I went wrong. The goal of this series is mainly to educate, but I also would like to try and hit 2100 ELO, um, maybe even push higher than that, I'm not sure. And yeah, if you want to check out the previous episodes of the playlist, just um, go below, the playlist should be linked. With that being said, let's get into the game. All right, we have the white pieces. We're going to start with e4 against Juna Bajau. Bajau? I think that's the Philippines that he's from. Yeah, I was just wondering whether it was the Czech Republic flag or not, but no, it is the Philippines. And we have e4, e5. We're going to play knight c6, which is the Vienna game. And black can respond in a variety of ways. Knight f6 is probably the most popular, which is what we get. And... I now am able to say that this video will be added to not only the Rapid Rating Climb playlist, but also a playlist featuring all of my games in, or all my videos, which feature the Vienna game, which occurs after F4, the Vienna Gambit. Now, black should not take this pawn, because if black takes, then I can go E5, and this knight has no forward movement because we control all of the squares which is what's going to happen. He can't move forward. He has to go back to g8. And white can build up a very, very impressive looking position. Now, I do want to say that knight d5 is technically a move. Because if knight takes d5, I think queen h4 check exists. Kind of, because if you go c3, takes, takes, then uh, the rook hangs. But if knight d5, knight d5, queen h4, I think we can go king e2. I think we can go king e2. It might be better to go knight e4, because if we take queen h4, if we go g3, then takes, then knight takes, though. I was just thinking knight e4... Knight e4, queen h4, king e2, and f3 check opening up the queen's attack on the knight. But we could just take with the pawn to give the knight some defense. So I, I've, the only reason I mention these knight d5, knight e4 ideas followed by queen h4 is because I have seen the computer, um, like in computer analysis before, the computer say that they are viable lines. But I think they're incredibly difficult to play. And, I mean, knight g8, although it's a horrible looking move in the sense that you're just undeveloping uh, your knight, it is probably the only really viable move for a human player to play. Or he's just going to give me the knight. Well, of course we're going to accept it. Um... That is interesting. Now, after queen takes, I was considering queen to e2 check, trying to force the bishop or the queen to block. And if king f8, then obviously the king can't castle. But I don't really like, if um, queen f6, queen e2, I don't really like king d8. Because then he's preparing rook e8, pinning my queen to my king. And honestly, I think black might kind of be surviving in that position. So we're not going to do that. After queen f6, I'm just going to take... Sorry, not take, but just play knight f3. I think my opponent's handling this situation quite well. He's down a piece, but he's trying to generate counterplay. Now, I'm sure taking on g7 is absolutely a viable move. But I think knight to f3 is the move I would rather play. Just because... The only problem with my position is my king, right? My king is exposed. Uh, it's exposed on this diagonal, which we weakened by playing f4. Obviously, I knew that. 
Uh, so now our knight can control the h4 square, making any queen h4 ideas far less dangerous. And if rook e8, then I just want to go bishop e2. I want to castle. I want to put the king on h1 so that it's not exposed via this diagonal. And then we should just be up a clean piece. Yeah, I'm going to give up this pawn, but I don't really care because f4 will not survive that long, I don't think. Our opponent might be planning ideas of like queen f6 and like moves like g5, g4 to go after my king side. But mm, I don't think I'm too worried. If queen f6, bishop e2, I do also have ideas of knight d4 forking the bishop and the queen. Uh, that doesn't work immediately because if queen f6, knight to d5, he can play queen to e6, attacking my knight and attacking my king. So I would not want to blunder that. I'm very surprised my opponent didn't just play knight g8. Like, I know it's not a very pretty looking move. But I also don't see what else he does. So okay, knight d5 is the move I want to play, but like we established, queen e6 is a problem. So bishop e2 looks very, very natural. Because now this is an idea. We control h4, so there's no checks. And rook e8 isn't a problem. Like I said, we just go knight d5, and we're going to take the bishop off the board. We're up a piece for two pawns, but like I said, f4 is weak. And if we ever get down to an endgame where, let's say, we end up with an extra knight, like if we just remove every single piece off of this board except for the knight and obviously the kings, this should be a pretty easy cleanup for the white pieces because our knight can just hunt these queenside pawns down. So although we're only technically plus one in material, I mean, it's pretty pretty good we have a nice position as well i think because we don't have any major weaknesses f4 however could be a weakness like i said his plan might be to go um g5 g4 but if he goes g5 i'm going to play knight d5 and just fork a ton of stuff it's going to be difficult for him to actually defend the g5 pawn in that scenario because if g5 knight d5 he has to play queen d6 to guard the bishop and after takes takes i think we can just take this pawn and it's basically game over because we're up again a piece for a pawn in that situation because he'll be losing the g5 pawn his pawn structure will be completely shattered and his king side pawns will be you know this will just be gone so he'll be incredibly exposed he's taking a long time to think I just I just don't understand bishop b4 to be honest. And he takes the knight. Wow, okay. That can't be right. That can't be right. I'm going to take with the d pawn. Typical um chess wisdom would say to take towards the center. But I want to take with the d pawn to open my bishop up, also prepare moves like queen d4 to offer a queen trade, and also give myself the possibility of castling queenside if I want. The e file should be not really a uh, should be not a problem, <laughs> should not be a problem. Uh, I think he might have also been worried about where this bishop is actually going to go because if he goes to a square like d5, I can just play d4, and we have ample support for this pawn. We'll kick the bishop out, play a move like knight d5, and again, we're going to win the bishop. So, it does seem a bit premature from him, though. There was no need to trade bishops like that. I love the move queen d4, because we offer a queen trade, and we also are going to win the f-pawn if he moves his queen. So that's what I'm going to do. His idea might have been bishop g4 to try and take this knight and get queen to h4 check-in, but that plan is far too slow. Um, he doesn't have enough time to go about doing all of that. So there's a good chance this game ends fairly quickly, to be fair. Um, I don't really know what he should do. If he plays a move like queen e6, trying to go after my bishop, that might be a good course of action. Queen e6, bishop f4, rook e8. I could just play the move queen d2 to defend the bishop. Hmm. That looks fine. I mean, the bishop is a bit of a liability. While it's 
while it can be pinned to my king, which means like rook e8 or queen e6. So I suppose there's that, but we'll always be able to defend the bishop somehow, even if we have to play a move like king to f2 to keep an eye on it. And you know what? After the move queen f5, I want to play bishop d3 attacking the queen, because if we take this, then he takes on c2. And we're absolutely fine, but we could consider bishop 2 f4, and after queen c2, bishop d3. But he can take on g2, so we're not quite trapping it. I love the move bishop d3, though. And I'm going to play it. You might be saying, what about rook e8, Jack? Uh, where's the king going? You're not going to drop the bishop back. Nah, we're just going to move the king. I just want to put the king on f2. He has no dark squared bishop. So although we are exposed on these diagonals... Our knight and our queen do a good job of monitoring them. And his queen's under attack and f4 is under attack. And our bishops are lining up pretty nicely with the queen and the knight against the king. This could be a pretty devastating attack. And we also have three pieces developed. Our bishop is about to get developed. Our rooks are going to come into the game. My opponent's queen side is still standing around doing nothing. If knight c6, we take the queen. If he takes our queen, I mean, there's a ton of different moves. But we could just give a desperado sacrifice and take back, and we just still up a clean piece, and we get the pawn back as well with a bit of compensation. Okay, queen h5 doesn't actually threaten anything, so I think this is a no-brainer. If knight to c6, attacking our queen... Oh, that's a little bit annoying, I suppose. I guess it's a little annoying. Maybe take with the queen. And go for moves like queen g5, trying to secure a queen trade. Bishop f4, knight c6. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I could play queen a4. But I feel like my queen's out of the game a bit. I want my queen on the king side. This is where the action's taking place. Although, if bishop 2, f4, knight c6, we could play rook a to e1, because if he takes our queen, this is checkmate. So bishop f4, knight c6, rook a to e1. If he takes, then we take, and again, if he takes, then it's back rank mate. So, bishop f4, knight c6, rook a e1. If he plays a move like, I don't know, bishop e6, blocking the e file, then we can go with our plan of queen to a4. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll pose the question. Let's do it. We can always backtrack and play something a bit safer if we need to. Uh, our king is fine. Again, we're not exposed to any checks on c5 or h4 or anything. If um, knight c6 here, I guess he did have bishop to, sorry, queen to c5, which is a little bit annoying. But to be fair, we can actually play king g3. And the king's completely safe on g3. I'd like to play rook a to e1 here though. Like I said, if he takes our queen, then we just deliver checkmate. Let's do it. Is it a bit unnecessary? Maybe. But I, honest, like, I honestly think this is the most accurate way of going about the position. Because here if we take with the queen, we're still struggling to develop some of our pieces, right? Whereas taking with the bishop and playing rook a to e1, we get all of these pieces into the game because we have a little bit of spare time where we don't actually have to move the queen because of tactical reasons. So, I, like I say, you can argue there was a simpler way to go about the position. Absolutely, queen f4 was probably simpler. But I think this is the most accurate um, way to go about it. Because now all of our pieces are playing, and this h rook will be playing once it goes to e1 if he trades with us. 
And we could also just put the rook on f1 if we want to put the king on g1. But like I said, if um move like bishop to e6, renewing the threat of knight to d4, then after queen a4, queen c5 check. Oh, we could actually play bishop to e3 even. We could just play play, play bishop to e3. And he can't do anything. This rook isn't attacking the bishop, but it doesn't matter anyway. Because our rook will be defending the bishop. So we have... Well, and the king, obviously. Uh, so we would have ample defense. If um in this position we played queen to a4, then queen to c5 check, we wouldn't have bishop to e3 because he has two attackers and we have one defender. So I also wanted uh, to make sure that I didn't have to go into that line. Because if queen a4, queen c5, I probably have to play king g3 in this position. And like I said, my king should be fine on g3. But it's a bit more exposed than I would like. So rook a1. The computer, I would... I'd, I'd expect it probably gives this a brilliant move. I wouldn't say it's a brilliant move because it's very obvious. Um, like once you see the move, it's incredibly obvious. Um, automatically you're thinking okay move the queen but it's danger levels right the only thing more valuable than a queen is a king so that is that let's see what he plays he's getting quite low on time and again we're actually up on time it just <laughs> maybe the restarting of the rating climb series is what we needed um, to improve our time management the move queen e4 does exist to go after h7 and if he moves his bishop to i don't know a square like g4 then this would be mate if queen e4 bishop d7 though we can't take and h7 is defended by the queen anyway so i think i prefer queen to a4 just step off of this there's potential tactics if we go queen e4, and we're not even threatening mate anyway. So we're just going to put pressure on the knight, and if the knight moves, this rook could be a bit vulnerable, especially since, you know, he is blocking these two lines at the moment, but if these pieces ever move, then we could be posing him some problems. Bishop d7 is a move that he might play, but I think we can go queen to b5 to try and access the king side, and offer a queen trade. Of course, if bishop d7, we could trade rooks first, but I don't really want to. Hmm, interesting move. Bishop d5. Does he want to trade that? I don't know. Maybe he wants to trade the knight so the knight no longer defends the h4 square. Just remove a defender of the king. I want to play bishop to e4, though. Because we support that twice, he attacks it twice. This knight has no way into the game anyway. And it blocks this bishop's attack on our knight. This bishop is probably his best piece. So bishop to e4 looks very nice to me. And if he moves his bishop, then we might take the knight. Let's do it. Bishop e4. He's posing some practical problems, because if he gets rid of this knight, and, I don't know, I take with the pawn, then maybe these moves are kind of annoying, because bishop g3 would hang a queen. So, he's playing some practical moves here, but um, I don't think that they actually pose too much of an issue, as long as we navigate them correctly, which I think we're doing. I'm just trying to shut down all of his play. Because the only real bad thing about my position is my king is a little bit exposed, right? But we have a ton of pieces surrounding the king to help out in the defense, which allows us to play moves like bishop to e4. By the way, if you've made it this far in the video, then I hope you're enjoying and finding this educational. I hope you also are happy that the Rating Climb series is continuing, because uh, as you probably know if you've been around the channel already, I was initially going to stop it once we hit 2000 ELO, which we did. Like I say, check out the playlist if you want to see that video. It was a banger. 
But I thought we should continue it. I think it provides a lot of value. And a lot of you in the comment section seem to agree with that. And if um, you're not subscribed to the channel already and you've already made it 20 minutes into the video, chances are you're probably enjoying this or at least finding it educational. So if that is the case and you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. It really helps with the channel and allowing me to put, to put more effort into the channel as, you know, more people are watching. And, you know, then I can show up more in your feed uh, like your YouTube home feed and you can get recommended my videos a bit more easily which should help you to improve your chess B5 B5 is a very interesting move now I did not consider this so the idea is my opponent is now controlling all of the squares on the fourth rank for my queen. If I take this, then the e4 square loses the queen as a defender. So technically this bishop is going to be hanging. But I don't think this works. Because if queen b5, you'll notice we're lined up with his queen. And if he takes, then I'm going to take his queen. So this bishop is kind of getting itself into a pin. We also have a lot of um, ideas to be threatening the knight, threatening this rook. Um, I understand the point of queen b5, trying to deflect my queen away from the defense of my bishop. And honestly, I missed this move. You should calculate moves like bishop d5 um, just in case. And if you take the queen, then the moves like bishop c6 exist. And it's three minor pieces versus a queen, which would be very interesting. And I feel like white would have the edge in that position. Um, but obviously we don't need to go into that. I think we can just take this. And like I say, if he takes, then we take the queen. If queen b4 and rook takes... Then I think we can just play rook takes, and if bishop takes, then we take the queen. So we're going to take, if rook to b8, then we just take the bishop. Because we now have two attackers compared to one defender. And that's where our opponent goes for. But it doesn't work. Because we just take here. Something like this, trying to remove the defender of my queen, would work if I took back. But if rook to e4, we can just take the queen. And my opponent's plan does not work. So here we are up two bishops. We have two extra bishops in this position. This should be completely winning. Okay. Knight e5. If I take with the knight, then I suppose my king might get a little bit exposed. So I'm going to take with the bishop instead, just so my knight maintains its, def its very, very nice defense of my king. I assume he's going to take with the pawn, because if he takes with the rook, then I will take with the knight. And if a move like queen h4 gets played, I just have g3. So that's not an issue. So pawn takes is the move we're expecting. I'll probably just play b3. Just to stop rook b2. If b3 and the rook and we have something like rook bd8, the rook can't access d2 because we control that square. And even if the rook could access d2, we have rook to e2 anyway. You've got to still stay wary in these positions. But I think we're fine. Let's go b3. Because I don't want to allow rook b2. Okay, queen c4 looks good. Let's do it. Just keeping an eye on this bishop, keeping an eye on the f7 pawn, looking at c7. And I'm also keeping an eye on e2 in case rook d2, rook e2 ever happens. Okay, I think my opponent wants to go f5, which, to be fair to my opponent, he is doing well in trying to create counterplay here. I think I have a nice move, which is just bishop d3. Bishop c6 is on my radar, 
and queen to h4. But then the queen has access to the f5 square and could try to infiltrate. So I think it makes more sense to play bishop d3 and keep my bishop on this line. e4 isn't a move because we control that square three times. So that's not an issue. So I'm going to play bishop d3. We could even play queen to e4 to control the f5 square and to put a lot of pressure on h7. So that moves like g4 might exist or h4 g4 to stop g4 queen h3. I mean, obviously we're completely winning. We're up two bishop. Sorry, we're up a bishop and a knight, but we still need to convert this. And like I said, my king is technically kind of exposed, so we don't want to blunder anything. I think my opponent's doing the right thing in trying to throw these pawns at me. Because what else can he do, right? I'm blocking the D file. I already blocked the B file and his own pawn is blocking the E file. So he's making some practical moves here, but I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough. Okay. He's also quite low on time. So yeah, this should be a fairly s simple conversion. Mm, okay, f5 just hangs e5 though. Can I not just take? If rook takes, knight takes, we're threatening a mate like this. Very common tactic. Um, and also if rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, queen to h4 check isn't an idea because our queen controls that square. We could start with knight to e5. But I'd rather try and trade the rooks. So let's go. Yeah, he could take the knight first to remove the defender of my rook, but he has to give up a whole queen to do that. So that tactic obviously doesn't work. And yeah, this, um, I mean, you know, if my opponent had one more move to play e4, we'd still be winning after bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, because rook d2 doesn't exist as our knight controls that square. Uh, we'd, we'd still be absolutely winning, but things would be a bit more complicated. But rook e5, and um, he just... I don't see how my opponent has anything in this position. So, and their f5 is under a lot of pressure as well. Moves like queen f4 or queen to h4 are going to come in soon. Of course, c7 is hanging, and it's been hanging for a few moves. But the c7 pawn is irrelevant. I'm up two pieces already. Why would I need another pawn? Say I could take the g7 pawn or the f5 pawn, then sure, I'd go for that. But that's because it weakens his king. And the reason I took e5 was because e4 was going to happen... I'm not just taking the pawn for the sake of taking a pawn. I'm taking the pawn because it weakens his attack. Let's take this. This queen can't infiltrate anywhere. Like I say, h4 is defended by our queen. And the d file is blocked off by our bishop. Okay, rook f8 stops ideas of knight to f7. Queen f4 looks like a decent move. The reason I say queen f4 is because we stop this pawn advancing and we also just stick around on the king's side to help in the defense. If queen f4, he might go g5. But that could actually be good for us because then we can go queen to d4 and try and line things up on this diagonal. And if the king goes to g8, then we can bring our bishop to c4. So queen f4 could be a good bait move. We're baiting the move g5. Uh, of course, we could have just developed this rook, but I just wanted to bring the queen over. Yeah, and we bait the move out. There we go. So now we're going to go to d4, line up this. If the king moves, then we just give a check. So, you know, in this position, we could have just played a move like rook to e1. I thought queen f4 was very solid. We put pressure on f5. We just make sure this queen isn't doing a single thing over here. Keep an eye on the knight. And like I said, we bait out the move g5, which should lead to a far should lead to a far quicker victory than if we played a move like rook to e1. 
So, okay. I don't see a defense for our opponent. Well, a good defense anyway, because knight f7 or knight to g6 will be a double check, meaning that the king will have to move. He can't really attack my queen either. Okay, he goes for a queen trade instead. We're just going to take, of course. And this makes the game very easy. Let's go rookie one, get the rook into the game. And should be a pretty easy cleanup. Um, I'm very happy with the idea of queen f4 and queen to d4 after g5 was baited out. Because it just makes our job a whole lot easier. Okay, if I could somehow get this knight to e6, this would be a fork. But because of the geometry, it would take me three moves to do that. Although I think I am actually going to go for that. Because we're going to attack a7. He can't actually defend a7 because a6 is controlled by my bishop and a5 is controlled by my knight. Okay, he goes king to f6. If I take this, then rook a8 goes after a2, which isn't a problem, but like, why allow it? I like the move rook e5 going after f5. And this knight can't be attacked, so that's not a problem. Rook e7 is also good going after h7. Knight e5 is also good looking at knight d7 check winning the rook. I'm actually going to play that. I know, I think I did just move my knight. Oh yeah, that's just a repetition. <laughs> that was stupid. That was kind of stupid. Um, Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. If king g7... I think I'm going to go to d7 instead. So... Oh, he goes here. Alright, interesting. Rook e8. D8 even. Why am I struggling here? Let's just go knight f3. Let's just go and win this pawn. I feel like I'm trying to be too fancy about this. Let's just keep things a bit easier. Let's just go rook e5. Go after the f5 pawn. I don't see how he defends this. I... <laughs> I feel like I just overcomplicated the position by trying to go for an immediate knockout. But realistically, I can just clean up all the pawns. So there's no need to um, allow anything stupid in this situation. My opponent's also down to a minute. So that's obviously very good for us. Let's take with check. Let's give a check. I could give this check, but I'd rather give this one. Oh, I nearly played bishop to a6, but I just hung a bishop. Oh dear. Um, bishop e4 I kind of like. Just cut in the king's escape off. Bishop c6 would be threatening rook f8 forcing him to trade rooks with me let's go bishop c6 i'm trying to create a mating net that's the idea of this whole maneuver just to suffocate the king's position if we go rook f8 then the king can escape but then we could give this check. But then we give up a piece to do that. So why allow it? I'm going to go king to e3 to defend the knight. And then I think I would just want to go c4, c5 to dislodge this rook. Okay, let's take this. And he can't give me a check because my knight controls the square. Now his rook needs to move. Not many options. Check here. 
This is almost mate, but he has the f6 square. But then we can go rook to e6 and force a trade. So that's what we're going to do. So we take up this square, but we don't take up this square. Oh, he has that square. I kind of missed that. Ugh. Off form. Off form. Um, I'm making this far too difficult for myself. I really am. Let's just go rook e4. Go after h4. If this, my knight's defending c2, so we're fine. Ah, okay, he blunders bishop to e8. There we go. And now it's game over. I expect him to resign. No. Check. Let's just play king f4 to defend my rook, and then we can push this pawn. Okay, we take this first. And now pre moves are easy. Let's just take this. Give him a check. I give him another check. And now let's push. Cutting the king off. And we do have to be a little bit careful actually. For stalemating tricks with the king on e7. If we promote while the king's on e7, it would have been stalemate because we would have controlled everything. But fortunately, he doesn't go for that, but I saw it anyway. Okay, if we promote now, then he has c7 and a7. And this is checkmate. Like so. All right, very interesting game. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think the game review will be quite interesting. The game, I mean, it was kind of over from the start. But you do also have to convert these positions because black created some practical problems for us. But I think we navigated them incredibly well. Uh, we've moved like bishop to e4 and sacrificing, well, sacrificing the queen in this position after rook a1, I think, was very accurate. Just trading all the pieces off. I really liked this idea of queen to f4 to bait out the move g5, which essentially forces my opponent to trade queens. The end game we probably could have navigated a little bit better, but we eventually found a way through, and then the conversion is easy from there. I did want to mention that I saw this idea here. Um, no, after this, he could play king to e7, because if I promote, this is stalemate, because we cut the king off on the files, and my knight cuts the king off like this. Um, so here, we would just have to waste, after king e7, we just waste an extra move. The king has to now go to the back rank, and then we can promote and deliver checkmate. But anyway, let's get into the analysis, see what the computer has to say. Hope you enjoyed the game. Alright guys, so analysis time. You may notice the lighting is a bit different. I might look a bit different. Um, this is actually later on in the day because I was busy during the day. Anyway, that's not going to stop me from giving you a sick analysis. Uh, you guys might know this because I might put it in the thumbnail. I had 91.6% accuracy, which in itself is obviously decent. But I had zero inaccuracy, zero mistakes, zero misses, zero blunders. Which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, my opponent had 81.8% accuracy. Which to be fair to him. Like I was saying. He made a stupid decision in the opening. To just give away his knight. I guess he thought it was a practical decision. But he wasn't creating any real chances. To justify it. Um, but after that. He played fairly well. Like. Don't get me wrong. He was down a piece, so he never really had a chance to actually get back into the game. But he didn't play that badly, considering he was down a piece. He created some chances. Um, and, you know, trying moves like b5 with deflection tactics and whatever. So, let's get into the analysis. e4, e5, knight c3, <clears throat> knight f6, and f4. So the thing is, you should not take this, right? You, you really shouldn't. It's just a mistake. But the I think the reason that a fairly high proportion of people do take is because 
if this was a king's gambit and I go f4 in this position, then by far the best move is to take, right? Because it's objectively dubious for white. <clears throat> However, in the Vienna, it's not quite the same. And I, not only because I can play the move e5 and kick the knight out, but also, um, this queen can't access the h4 square until this knight moves. So after e5, knight g8, I have time to go knight to f3. Here, i am already got my knight developed, whereas in the king's gambit, that isn't the case. And this pawn is already on e5. And I just have a ton of space. Black's kind of fighting from a backseat position. Whereas in the normal King's Gambit, after something like this, Black can already play moves like g5, even d5, uh, bishop e7. Black isn't... like I don't have my knight on c3, and I also don't have my pawn on e5, restricting Black's play further. So it's basically the Vienna Gambit, if it's accepted, is a massive improvement on the King's Gambit. You should not take this pawn, right? We've established that. Black should play d5 here. That's by far the best move. d6 is also playable, just defending this pawn. Now, knight c6 isn't so playable. And if you check the playlist below with games in the Vienna Gambit, I believe the one saying something like he resigned after 12 moves uh, actually featured a classical game that I played, like over the board, where my opponent entered this line. And this is not good because I have d4 in this position attacking the knight. And once the knight is kicked out, I can play e5. And you get a very similar situation to this, uh, to this, except here, this knight is booted back. I already have my pawn on d4 in this scenario. And after knight to f3, we essentially have, let me try and find it. We essentially have here... The same position, except I'm not down a pawn. In this case, I am a down a pawn. We're equal material. I also have my C knight developed. I have a pawn on D4. And my opponent has his knight on C6, which isn't good. Because you might be thinking it puts pressure on the pawns, but these pawns are incredibly well defended. So they're not going anywhere. It's more of a liability and is vulnerable to moves like D5 in the future. So the Vienna Gambit is basically, in my opinion, just an improvement on the King's Gambit. d5, like I said, after pawn to f4 is the main move. And you go into main lines like this. There's tons of videos on my channel in these lines. And there's loads of videos on my channel in these lines, where I like to go for moves like knight to f6 to apply big pressure to the e5 pawn. So check the playlist below if you're interested. But my opponent goes e takes f4. I push e5, and the knight has to make a decision. The reason I did note this move, knight d5, actually, no, it isn't in this line. No, it isn't. It's after knight c6. It's after knight c6, I think. And after this d4 move, is it knight to e4 that's playable? Or is it, oh, knight d5 here. See, this is what I was thinking of. And after knight d5, queen h4, g3, you have queen e4, and you're forking a lot of things. And black is kind of okay. Although I'm pretty sure the queen can get trapped if she takes the rook. And if she takes the knight, then bishop g... No, knight f3, defending. And white is still better, but... It's an interesting line. That's why I was trying to think about the whole knight d5 sacrifice. But it was in a different line. Anyway, e4, e5. This knight has to retreat. Now, queen e7 can be played to pin the pawn to the king so that I can't take. But here, queen e2 is absolutely fine. And it just resumes the threat. It still controls these squares. So again, the knight has to retreat. And I can go with all the knight f3, d4 ideas, and f4 is probably going to fall. That's something like d4 if you try and go d5, sorry, g5 to defend. I have moves like knight d5, queen d8 defends c7 because the queen was also under attack. And black gets absolutely destroyed here. It's just 
bringing the queen to e7 and then having my queen go to e2 can backfire. So after e5, personally, I think the best plan for black is just to retreat. I mean, your problems still aren't over after moves like knight to f3, d6. I like to go bishop c4, gambit a second pawn, and you can castle. But I think here it's actually better to take on e5. And after queen h4, just go king to f1. And we have a ton of pressure on f7. If something like bishop to e6 is played, we can trade the bishops. Moves like queen f3. b 7s under attack. f4 is under attack. This is very nice for white. And it's objectively not actually the best way to play bishop c4 in this position. It's better to go d4. And after d e5... Queen e2 is the best move because you don't want to take with the d pawn and trade queens. But I like bishop c4 personally. Anyway, e5, knight j should be played. My opponent goes bishop b4. Sorry, I know I spent a long time in the opening, but I thought it's. I think that it's useful to try and explain some of the intricacies of an opening. There's no point memorizing a bunch of moves if you don't understand the ideas behind the moves, right? Because then when your opponent plays something weird like this, I mean, obviously here you know you should be taking the knight. But you need to understand the ideas of the position if your opponent goes for a sideline that you don't recognize. So bishop b4 is played. And I just don't understand what the point is. Because after ef6, I was expecting queen f6. There's no threat. Now here queen e2 check is actually the best move. But after king d8, I was a little bit worried about rook to e8. Although here, apparently, I have knight d5 with this fork. And if rook d8, I assume I just take here. And I get an exchange as well as my... Hmm? Yeah, I get an, an exchange as well as my extra piece, which just puts me a rook up. So queen d6 defending the bishop. And queen f3 is apparently the best move, because if you take this, then rook d8. But there's no need to go into all these complications. I was going to just play knight to f3, play moves like bishop to e2, and just get castled. Because then I can secure my extra pawn. The compute, sorry, extra piece. The computer calls this an inaccuracy, but I disagree. So, ef6, he doesn't take, he castles. Oh, by the way, if the queen takes... You can't go knight d5 straight away like I explained in the game. I was a bit worried about queen e6, but I guess you can just go queen e2 and force a queen trade here. So again, that would be a nice way to simplify the position. f 6 castles, I go knight to f3. You could take this pawn, which is actually a mistake because of queen to h4. g3, and if takes... Oh, well here I can just take the rook. But rook to e8 check. You're having to find a sequence of only moves as white here. Like, you know, you don't want to go into this. So knight f3. I just wanted to control the h4 square so that nothing could ever happen. My opponent takes on f6. Bishop e2 is the best move. Just blocking off the e file. Bishop c3. Dc3 is best. Uh, like I say... Typical wisdom would say take towards the center. In this scenario, I want to open up my queen, open up my bishop, give myself the option of castling queenside. d6, queen d4, which is the best move because I just want to trade queens. Queen f5, I go bishop to d3 because I want to attack this queen and just set up a lot of pressure in this position. Um, and after he gives the check, king f2. And it looks scary, but he's got no dark squared bishop. He's got no knight hopping to g4 or e4 to give me a check. And I cover both this diagonal and I cover this diagonal with my queen. So queen h5. Okay, it was actually best to take here with the queen. But we take with the bishop. And after knight c6, we go rook a to e1, which is the best move. If you were to play... Queen c4, I didn't like the fact that my opponent could go bishop to e6. So if I was to go queen a4 here, I thought my opponent had a bit of play with queen c5 check. Computer's telling me to either play knight d4 or king g3. 
King G3 is probably the way I would have gone, which it now thinks is the best move. Um, it changed its mind. And after Queen H5 threatening, maybe Queen G4, in which case I guess the king could just move. H3 covers that. And the king looks very exposed. We control all the squares on the G file. We control all the squares around the king. So we're actually safe and we can always tuck away to h2 if need be. But rook a1 is better because we kind of induce the move bishop e6. Of course, if you take this, that is checkmate. So I really like this move. I kind of force bishop e6 and then I go queen to a4. Here again, if queen c5 is played, I can go bishop to e3, which attacks the queen and keeps my king nice and safe. Whereas if I did that in this position, then I would just be hanging a bishop and black would be winning. So by playing rook a to e1 first, I not only add a defender, but I also induce bishop to e6, which removes another attacker. So it goes from having one defender versus two attackers to, let me get to the position, to having one attacker and two defenders, right? So that was the line I needed to calculate. My opponent was bishop d5, which I thought was a very practical move. I go bishop to e4, which apparently isn't the best, although the computer does like it. Bishop g3 is also good, which is also a move I considered just to add a bunch of defense to the h4 square and potentially swing my queen over. And if you take this knight, I just take back with the pawn and I'm absolutely fine because everything is covered. But I thought that I preferred bishop to e4 simply because I'm offering a trade. And if you retreat this bishop to a square like e6, not only does your attack kind of end, I could also take this knight if I want to. But I can just consolidate in this position. Knight d4 is also a move to force more trades. I could double up on the e file and tuck the king away to g1. Black's very, very passive. So after bishop e4, he goes b5, which I thought was a practical move. And like I said, this was a possibility to go three minor pieces versus a queen. But of course, I have no reason to do that. And I think I said during the game, I thought this was uh, probably winnable for the white pieces. And it is slightly better. But of course, this is incredibly complicated. Moves like queen c5 exist, attacking the queen and the bishop. But I do have knight to d4, blocking the check and defending the bishop. But it would have been interesting if we were forced into that line. However, we weren't. We could just take on b5. And the problem is the queen is always hanging at the end of these lines. The queen is almost trapped. Like, she's really running out of squares, right? Let's imagine for a second the queen was on g4 and black has this position. Let's just go a3 so nothing changes. Uh, so basically he... Wait, let me go back. Let me make this a bit more realistic. Bishop g4... Uh, a3 and now b5. Now b5 is a bit of a problem because if I take them my bishop hangs so I either go for this line where I sack the queen for two pieces and I'm already up a piece so it's a queen for three pieces. You can't take this bishop because I'll take this rook and that is probably winning. So a move like rook to d8 bishop g3 for example that apparently blunders something. What? And um, black infiltrates. I guess that shows how tricky it is to play three pieces versus a queen. But that could have forced us down either that line, or I would have to play the move bishop h7, a desperado tactic, to win a pawn on the way out. And I'm up a pawn in this position. But, okay, my, his bishop's under attack, my bishop's under attack. If he tries to trade like this and win this bishop, then I, I can't do that. I can't take the bishop. I need to play queen d3 check. Oh, okay, and when the king moves, then I can take and defend the bishop. And maybe I can vert this pawn up endgame, but it's, you know, difficult. My point is, b5 would be a great deflection move if the queen is not on the fifth rank. 
As it was, however, the queen is on the fifth rank. So this bishop is, is pinned to the queen because the queen's undefended. And the queen can't move it with a check or a meaningful attack on any of my pieces. Because if queen g4 is played trying to attack my bishop to get out of the way, then I can just do this. If the rooks are exchanged and you try to take, then I assume I just take on c6 and I emerge up two whole pieces. So my opponent goes rook a to b8 in this position, which just gives me the bishop. Apparently the best line was rook e4, rook e4. You can't take because you lose the queen. Um, I guess his bishop is no longer going to be taken. And just a6 trying to force the queen to move. Because the queen's currently attacking the bishop, the knight, and pinning the bishop to the queen. Something like queen d3, take on e4. White is still up an entire piece, but this was the best line for black, apparently. Difficult to find. My opponent goes rook a, b8, and I just take the bishop. Knight e5, he tries to put some pressure on. I fought knight e5. Of course it's winning, but I felt like I was kind of weakening my king a bit. I prefer to take with the bishop, which to compute of things is a slightly better move. Because my knight is doing an excellent job at covering my king from checks by not only being on the f-file, but controlling h4 and g5 and blocking this diagonal. Also putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Here I go b3, just to stop any rook b2 ideas, because why give him an infiltration for no reason? Rook db8, I go queen c4. And remember, the knight controls d2, so rook d2 isn't an idea. King h8, I thought, was a really good move for my opponent, because I'm putting a lot of pressure on the f7 pawn, and he wants to go f5 to try and break out of the position a bit. I go bishop d3, which is a prophylactic move, so that f5 doesn't come with tempo. Because if I play a move like h3 in this position, f5, and if I go bishop d3 just for example, then e4 is kind of annoying, and black is winning a piece back. I am still completely winning. There is an interesting move, queen c6, by the way. Oh no, the queen's attacking yet. Yeah, I was thinking I was pinning uh, this pawn to the rook, but I forgot this queen was also helping in the defense. Good job I played bishop d3, because my whole idea was to just get rid of any complications. f5 is played. And of course, I can just take this pawn, rook takes, knight takes. And let's just say, for sake of argument, something like queen h4, g3, and queen h3 is played. Then I have this classic checkmating net with the smothered mate like this. So I was watching out for that. As it happens, the queen is also covering the square, and my opponent moves his rook. So that he's also covering the square with the rook. I go queen f4. Now, queen c7 was the best move. But I don't care about the c7 pawn. I go queen's, queen f4 because I want to put pressure on the f5 pawn. I want to stop the pawn from advancing. And I also want to bait the move g5. As it happens, g5 is an excellent move. But this makes my life very easy after the move queen to d4. Because the problem is, if my opponent doesn't give me this check and force a queen trade, let's just say it's my move again. Then he's kind of just getting mated. Oh, no, not queen there, bishop there. He's kind of just getting mated. Because my bishop and my queen come alive, and my knight helps out in covering some squares as well. Did I calculate this checkmate in free? No. I just saw this position and went, how on earth does he stop anything? Because if he goes king to g8, then bishop c4. And he is either forced to step back onto this deadly diagonal or block with his rook. And in that case, I just win absolutely everything. So my opponent has no choice but to go queen h4 check and force a queen trade. Queen takes, g takes, rook e1. I misplay this endgame a little bit. I don't see massive point going into detail about it. Because I think I explained it well enough during the game. Eventually I realised the idea should be rook e5 defended by the knight just to go after the f5 pawn. I take, I go knight d4 check. And I try and put the king in a box with bishop to e4 and bishop to c6. Just keeping the king contained. After a6, king e3, h5, my opponent has no moves. 
I play king e3 to defend the knight so that I can let's forget about him sacrificing a pawn so that I can go c5 to kick this rook off of the sixth rank or the d file more so the d file because the rook has no moves on the d file and yeah I give this check I give this check and king King f7. Uh, I don't really know why I gave these checks, to be honest. I think I might have missed something. But hey ho, rook e4 and a5 allows bishop to e8, skewering and winning the rook. Had my opponent defended this with a move like rook g5, trying to get off of um off of it. B4, I guess, defends c5 because why give him anything? A5, I can just go c3, keeping everything defended. And let's just say I move like rook g2 trying to go after some pawns. I can always take the h4 pawn. My opponent survives a little longer. But oh, that actually just hangs a rook. So <laughs> let's, let's forget about that. But my point is I'm up two pieces and a ton of pawns. Like this is game over anyway. I make it, well, my opponent makes it easy for me by, by allowing me to win his rook. And here I just cut the king off on this file because my knight also protects my rook and we're covering basically all the important squares right which means the king can't go anywhere which allows me to to play without thinking these sorts of ideas are important when you're playing bullet because you need to realize like you need to try and make a setup like this so that you can push a pawn without thinking and deliver checkmate by pre-moving if you're really really low on time now i did realize that king to e7 existed like i said during the game um, and i thought that his best chance was to go king e7 here because if i promote it is checkmate because like i say i put him in a box which is good but not if it means that i stalemate him here of course i can just play a waiting move the king has to retreat to the back rank then i can promote and deliver checkmate via ladder which is what happens in the game really just deliver a ladder checkmate but i thought that was a practical way for my opponent to try and get a stalemate if i'm lazy and just pre-move pushing the pawn anyway i think that was a pretty um in-depth and comprehensive game analysis i know we blundered early in the opening but it's important to try and figure out how to convert those winning positions without giving your opponent chances because he did create some chances, in all fairness. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it to the end of the video, love you lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, quickly, um, if you haven't clicked away, drop some comments below if there's um, a certain kind of thing that you want me to like go over in a future video. Like if you want certain openings explained, certain themes explained. If you just want a certain type of video, maybe you want like... A blitz rating climb where I play free blitz games an episode I don't know please let me know because I'm trying to educate you guys and you guys know better than me what is going to help you learn anyway I'll let you get off have a good one I'll see you in the next video